Good morning, everybody. Hello from Spiritual Whistleblower, live reporting to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here, everybody. I am super excited and stoked for tonight's event. You guys that RSVP, you guys have been confirmed. You know the location. Uh, you know to be there at 6 p.m. We got food. We got uh, champagne. And... Um, I will be signing, autographing books, and selling whistles. And um, this event is a bit more different from all the others that I've been doing over the last two months because this is a private space. Okay, it's not a restaurant or a place open to the public. And I want to shout out my girl Sparkle Studio uh, Pink Suites. It's a private event space. So this will be a more intimate, private um, event. And I will be speaking um, to you all. Um, doing a bit of motivational speaking as well as, um, you know, getting you guys to interact and have these hardcore discussions on narcissistic abuse and how your situation relates to things. So I cannot wait, Charlotte. Then, you know, tomorrow, Monday, October 5th, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia. I sent that email out. Everybody, I can't wait to see you in Atlanta. Got a good crowd coming. We're going to be breaking some crab legs. Uh, the spot that I chose, we, we're going to be breaking crab legs uh, tomorrow night. I can't wait for that. Also, uh, next Friday coming, October 9th, is Houston, Texas. I, I'll see my people in Houston. Dallas, Texas is Saturday, October 10th. And then Miami Beach, I will be in South Beach, Miami on Ocean Drive on Sunday, October 11th, my actual birthday. I sent all those emails out. Y'all check your email. I sent you the time, location, meet up, uh, meet up spot where we're meeting up. Everybody should have the email. I sent out Houston, Dallas, Miami, everything went out. So everybody get back to me, confirm your slots. Um, busy week for me, but let's deal with today. Charlotte, what's up? I can't wait. All right, let's get to the video. Let me make this short and sweet because I got a busy day today. I, I, I want to talk about, you know, the ping pong effect. I've mentioned this in the past about how the narcissist... Um, treats all his lovers his you know everyone that's in his sexual rotation we refer to this as the whore harem you know I, I like to call it the ping pong effect and I'll tell you why I call it ping pong y'all know what the game of ping pong is right you get at a ping pong table there's a little white ball and you get a paddle and you have a, a it's two two people there one is your opponent and you guys got to hit this little bitty ball over the uh, the net in the middle of the table and you just got to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until somebody knocks the ball off the table and you miss swinging it or something like that. But ping pong is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if you're sitting there watching two people play, your head is going to go back, forth, back, forth, watching the ball go back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, I want to metaphorically use that uh, as an example with how the narcissist rotates his lovers. Okay. And why it's not really, uh, um, it's actually a bad thing to be in his rotation. I don't give a fuck what position you're in, whether, you, you're, whether you're legally married to this sorry tripe the motherfucker, uh, whether you're a baby mother, whether you're an ex and he's trying to rekindle things with you, you do not want to be in the whore harem. I got several names for the whore harem. I call it the circus. I call it the fucking farm, you know, the, the farm with all the motherfucking farm animals, the pigs, the cows, the roosters, the ducks. You don't want to be in the motherfucking farmhouse with all the fucking farm animals, his rotation of motherfucking sex partners. You don't want to be in his fucking circus, his big top, big tent circus with all the clowns and the motherfucking, what's in the circus? We, we, we got the, um... The trapeze artists and um well it's mainly the, the narcissist sir, uh, circus is composed of motherfucking clowns let's let, let me just stick to the clowns that's some clown shit there's nothing cool about being rotated with other motherfuckers but you know at some point you played the role you was the main person in his in 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 his circle you might have been wifey you, were, you may have been living with him. You might have been fiance. Whatever the fuck he had you thinking the shit was. It was all fake from beginning to end. Let me tell you something. Narcissists always got a backup plan. You are never the only one they deal with. 
don't give a fuck if you got an engagement ring on your finger. The nigga could be paying your bills, whatever. It does not matter. If he's a true narcissist, he's got backup pussy on the back burner. And it's usually with some low self-esteem having ass bitches, his exes, side chicks, some bitch he fucked with five years ago, his old ratchet raggedy ass baby mother who has low self-esteem and ain't got a fucking backbone to cut his ass off once and for all. It's always a low-level bitch sitting on that back burner. And he these are the types of women he loves to keep in his rotation. He needs his ego stroke. Remember, this is a low life motherfucker. He 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 needs constant uh, um adulation and attention. He's got to go back to that whore harem in his rotation, his bag of tricks, and and he needs his ego stroke. He needs to be told he's handsome. He needs some sex. He needs something. One woman will never be enough for this greedy trifling motherfucker. So, I call it the ping pong, <clears throat> excuse me, I call it the ping pong effect because the motherfucker is back and forth between all his lovers like a ping pong game. Something with me, I refuse to be in a trifling nigga's rotation. No, the fuck, you're not going to rotate me. If he is rotating me, it's because I have no knowledge of the other women. But the moment I find out... The moment I motherfucking find out that the nigga is, is sleeping behind my back. Because I already, the nigga already done burnt me and gave me bacterial vaginosis. I know he doing something in the street, but I don't have enough evidence to find out or figure out who the fuck it is. And that's why he's constantly accusing me of cheating. I ain't cheated on the nigga not one time. But he's constantly accusing me, accuse me. Meanwhile, I done caught BV, bacterial vaginosis, twice already. I'm like, my pussy's itching. My pussy never itched like this before I got with this nigga. The moment I break up with the nigga, my shit clears up and my pussy's good. So this nigga's in the street, creeping with the baby mom behind my back. But, you know, ladies, we, don't have, we know something's off, but we don't have enough evidence to accuse the nigga. So we got to wait it out till God shows us a sign. And sure enough, God will let you see with your own two eyes the evidence that the motherfucker, the narcissist, has been sleeping around behind your back with the whores in his whore harem. The bitches on the back burner. But, you know, when, when you break up and you try to move on, this is what these trifling ass niggas try to do. He will try to come back. He'll slither his way back. He'll try to pull the friend card. What's up? Man, I'm sorry it didn't work out. Maybe we could be friends. Yeah, because he wants to keep fucking you. He wants to keep having access to you. And, you know, God forbid if you have a child with him, he feels already entitled to, to be up in your house because you have his child. So you could deny and say, no, he's going to say, well, you can't stop me from seeing my son. You can't stop me from seeing my daughter. That's why they get people pregnant. So they can stay connected to their fucking victim. They don't give two shits about the child. So at the end of the day, this motherfucker, they want you in their whore harem. They want to put you in their motherfucking rotation with all the other whores. When you break up, you go from being number one and he's going to try you. And he's going to try to put you in that side chick position while he's fucking the new hoe that he been fucking behind your back. He going to try it. He going to try to rotate you. I'm telling you. That's why it's critical to reject the motherfucker the moment he hovers you after the breakup. The moment he tries to slither back, even trying to play that friendship card and, and trying to blame you for everything, you better not fucking respond. Block that. Block him. If he sends his new bitch to contact, block her. Don't you say shit to the bitch. She's not worth a fucking conversation. The bitch is beneath you. Bitch, you wanted to fuck him? You wanted my scrap so motherfucking bad? You were standing there by the dumpster? When I, when I cut the nigga off, I bagged him in a trash bag and threw his ass to the dumpster and your stinking, low self-esteem having ass was standing there by the trash dumpster with your hands wide open waiting to catch the nigga. So you keep my trash, biatch. Don't contact me. There's nothing to discuss. You and him have a nice fucking life. Peace. No, he gonna try you. He gonna try to fill you out. I'm telling you. And y'all, some of y'all ladies, and this is not me coming down hard on you, but if you get weak and you sleep with the nigga, congratulations. 
you have just now been admitted to the ping pong university, the whore harem, the farmhouse, the motherfucking circus. You are now a part of that sexual rotation of all his whores. And he's going to play with you. He's going to bounce between you and her and her and her and her. He's going to be at baby mom's house three days a week. He's going to be fucking this ratchet ass bitch on the side. His hood rat bitch. Then he's going to be fucking this other slow bitch. He's going to be trying. Listen, these niggas juggle multiple women. They just good at hiding one from the other. They're good at keeping bitches separated. He'll bash one woman to the other. So y'all dislike each other. So y'all can prevent. Uh, each other from um so he can prevent y'all from comparing notes because if y'all compare notes to find a nigga been doing y'all dirty both y'all gonna dump the nigga and he don't want that y'all better smarten up with these niggas when he come if he try to come back into your life he does not deserve a response these are grown fucking men we're talking about 30 40 50 years old nigga no right from wrong he knew what he was doing when he did it to you it was premeditated it was calculated what is there to talk about no, we don't need to have a final discussion on closure. I got my closure. God showed me what the fuck was going on behind my back. Expose it. Case closed, bitch. No, there is no need for a final discussion. Take you and your tramp and all your other fucking tramps and get the fuck on, bird. Bird ass nigga. No, but what they do, and these there's so many low self-esteem having ass females that know y'all y'all will play fucking sister wives. You know the nigga sleeping at this bitch house and at his baby mom's house and that, and you don't care. Y'all 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 will still fuck the nigga. So he going to play ping pong with y'all. He going to ping pong back and forth, back and forth. He'll lay up and, and, and crash it and, and lay up and live off his baby moms for a couple of months till he get bored and tired of her bitch ass. Then he going to ping pong over to this bitch's house because baby mom is too, too much of a sucker and spineless and weak to check his ass and put his ass out. So she, he knows she ain't going nowhere, Miss Backburner USA. So he going he gonna to ping pong over here and fuck the new bitch that he met the cashier at Walmart. He gonna fuck her, then he gonna ping pong over here with one of his exes. Niggas ping pong, ping pong. When they get bored of one bitch, he gonna ping pong over to the other bitch. It's a back and forth competition. Stay the fuck up out that rotation. Stay the fuck up out that rotation. You a motherfucking queen. You was not built to be rotated by a bum ass nigga. These niggas that be out here treating women like shit, they ain't about nothing. Nigga, you is not Jay-Z. You're not Diddy. Nigga, you don't have enough money to be pulling no stunt like that. Just out here slanging dick and passing around bacterial vaginosis and chlamydia like it's candy, bitch. And don't be accepting no engagement ring. Again, an, an engagement ring to a narcissist has zero value. I told y'all this. Don't let these niggas play ping pong with you. You are not a game. You are not to be toyed with. You're a queen. Queens don't, you can't rotate a queen. Or a queen will rotate a fuckboy the fuck up out of her life, though. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, I'll see y'all later, Charlotte, North Carolina. I got a very uh, busy day. Let me get on up out of here. I got to get pretty. I got to get cute and get ready for tonight's event. Shouts out to Studio Pink. Pink Studio. <laughs> I got it backwards. I'm tongue-tied. I'm just uh, excited, I guess. But I'll see y'all later tonight. Later.